Hey guys, happy Sunday. I decided to come on with little Ronin because Ronin here does not seem to get as much camera time and he is a, a gorgeous, gorgeous baby. So he's gonna sit with me today while we talk. Much ado about nothing. Um, if you are newer to my channel, Ronan is the real born Clyde asleep and he is reborn by Rebecca Sheary of Bundles of Joy Nursery. I happened to come across his listing on eBay and found his artist on Facebook, communicated with her directly and ended up arranging a private sale actually because his auction ended. He is the most affordable reborn in my nursery, however, um, and particularly his face, he is arguably uh, one of the more realistic. He has rooted hair, um, and I would consider it sparse rooting. It's just very fine, fine blonde hair. Um, it never tangles, it's short, it's cut short. Um, he's got all the right veining, he's got some skin texturing. Um, one of the things that really makes him very realistic, and I'll hold him up, we'll see if you can see, I'm not, I won't know until after this video. Um, his eyelids, the creasing on his, uh, his upper eyelids, it's a very like red rosy look and it gives him a lot of realism. He's got some capillaries on the side of his face that you may or may not be able to pick up on the camera. And he is just super, super sweet. And of course, I'm rocking my awesome gold, solid gold Golden Girls t-shirt today. All right, so Mr. Ronan, pardon me while I grab my coffee. Mr. Ronan is one of four. Um, and he's one of three boys in my collection and we just, we just adore him. So I am, um, just hopping on with a quick, interesting question for you guys, because I, I've thought about this. Um, it has to do with collections and collection size. When I first found Reborns, which was the way a lot of people found reborns on eBay or or Etsy by mistake looking for something else and coming across these little babies I really felt very very much like I just wanted one baby and my ideas of what I could afford were not very high and so I was actually shopping for my daughter and I ended up ordering a custom Leah kit. It was my first baby. That was Norman, um, Norman Walker. And he was absolutely adorable. Um, but I, even before he even showed up, I ended up learning so much about the hobby and seeing so many dolls that were out there. And I was looking at dolls that were three times as much as he cost and thinking that is my absolute dream baby. Um, but I'll never be able to afford that. And then I fell in love with a doll by Wendy Graham, who was her first Atticus that she made. I've told this story before. So if you've heard it before, um, you know, sorry. <laughs> but long story short, I didn't get that doll, but I got an, a custom Atticus made by her. And that just blew my understanding of cost right out of the water. But I saw that doll and I thought, that is my baby. And I really, really never expected to want another doll after that. Not, let alone thinking about paying for another doll after that. Um, and then everybody's sort of like, you know, laughing to themselves because you know how it goes. There's so many amazing dolls and so many amazing babies and there's always like that newness that you crave and I ended up falling in love with another baby and then I fell in love with him and then I sold Norman and then it, 
and I got Keanu and it just sort of like it went and you know it created like unrest for me not the least of which was staying up until three in the morning scrolling when I'm in no position to be shopping for dolls scrolling to see what's out there and then you see what's out there and you feel like oh, I'm gonna miss it and of course the very obvious point and one that was certainly made by my husband is there's always going to be another beautiful baby out there there's always going to be another one that you feel you have to have um, which doesn't help you when you're in the throes of seeing one that you have to have and there's um, Tasha you were just talking about this the other day and I know I've touched on it before um, the appeal of having a small collection of one baby maybe two babies but um, one super special baby to me there's something very appealing about that to really like be immersed in that connection I guess um, and at the same time I've seen this with um, some other collectors I've started noticing it in my own um, like reborn practices um, that I tend to have you know one baby that I will focus on for a day or a couple of days and then you know I really take them all out and line them up you know to me that's like a little too unrealistic and um, but I don't feel a lack of a connection with each doll I have a specific connection or a, or a unique connection with each doll a unique like imagined relationship or imagined spirit or personality of that doll and um, it goes into the way I dress them and it goes into just sort of like the feeling that's associated with this collectible um, and collecting things that have personality ascribed to them definitely goes back to my my grandmother um, I, I seem to have inherited a lot of her her ways and her mannerisms and also you know her her like love of little unreal creatures stuffed animals baby dolls and really like feeling like they're real and my favorite story was velveteen rabbit and i just um there's nothing woo woo there i just i really feel like um, things have meaning or realness if you ascribe it to them so anyway my question for you is um, what would your collection look like if you had nobody else's opinion to consider no problems with being able to come up with the funds for the babies that you really wanted and no space limitation. Let's say that whether you lived by yourself or whether you lived with your family, you had you know, a house size space that belonged to you with however many rooms you felt you would want. Would you opt for a really large collection? Would you opt for a small, very perfect collection and would you utilize your space for shelving and storage for your massive collection or would you utilize your funds for a gorgeous nursery for your one or very few perfect babies I guess another way to frame that question is what would your truest desire if you had no limitations be for your collection and I really f I think in the beginning I would have felt that it would have been you know one or two really amazing babies which I feel that I have actually um, and I'm happy that I feel that way and it's okay if not everybody gravitates towards the babies that I'm drawn to because luckily they're in my collection um, but I was thinking about it the other day and if I ever found myself living by myself or with you know a lot of extra extra space you know I think that I might have probably not a, a, I probably wouldn't have what I would consider a large number of dolls I don't think that I would I could see myself 
having more than 10. I mean, I'm just throwing out an arbitrary number, right? Because I've never had that many. And so I, I'm just guessing. But I feel like I probably would have more on the larger side. But I would have, I would have a very, very nice, clean, open nursery space, some wonderful, wonderful, like storage, quote unquote storage, shelving or cases or wherever they, the babies that weren't being interacted with would be kept safely and then still continue with having that direct um, relationship. And because really, if, if you don't have a space or a money consideration, then you could pretend you only have one doll until you feel you need to change and then swap it out. So it's kind of a similar question that's been asked many times and I'm sure over the years a topic that's been discussed a hundred times or a hundred thousand times, I don't know. But, uh, but that's my question to you. So I am very ready for Keanu to come home. He is at, uh, at the spa, as Kimberly says, he is getting um, a few minor touch-ups done with his artist and he will be ready this week to come home so I'm gonna go pick him up this week sometime and I'm just waiting for the word and I have jury duty tomorrow have any of you ever done jury duty I was selected once when I lived in Florida and then uh, after some of the interview process it turned out that I knew of somebody that was on trial or you know being charged you know not personally but I knew of them through somebody and totally unrelated to the case but you can't you can't be involved so um, I think it would be awesome to be involved in a really intense case my husband's hoping that that's not the case so that I'm not sequestered <laughs> and the business falls goes to pot so um, but 9 a.m. I report and hopefully it's um, interesting and not too boring and I almost forgot about it which would have been a very bad situation have you guys ever done jury duty what was that like for you did you like it I know that you I may not even get selected so we'll see we'll see how that goes So, and I'm still thinking about doing a podcast. Um, obviously, I just talked about this a couple of days ago, so I'm still thinking about that. It hasn't gone away. Part of me thinks about YouTube, um, but really you could do both because you could film yourself doing the podcast and then you could have a channel. So, um, if, if I did a podcast and I did, um, you know, and or a channel and I did have, you know, non-dolly but like relationship or life type um, topics and I did take like, questions um, that I would discuss and like give my two cents on kind of like a Dear Abby. I always loved that column, Dear Abby. If you guys um, are not of the generation of Dear Abby, she had a column in the newspaper and people would write in for relationship I think and or life advice, work advice, things, but I think it was mainly romantic um, advice or f familial relation advice. And, and Abby would select questions from, from readers and then she would write a response and it would be published in the newspaper. And I kind of see it like that. I think that that would be a cool portion of what I do. The topics that I'm really interested in, I mentioned in my last video, are um, the psychology and sociology, the connections of life, the parallels and the similarities in different things. For example, when you talk about creating your new life by visualizing the possibility of being that thing that you want to be and then reality sort of following you being able to see it in your mind being played out in a show like The Biggest Loser where you have people that are on 17 different medications and they hate themselves and they're not living healthy and they're not living happy and then they're literally working out for a week or two and you start to hear their 
talk about what they're capable of turn around and they start to see the possibility and they start to see themselves a little differently like maybe as an athlete and and all of a sudden yes their diet and exercise has changed but in a week or two they're down to two medications and 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 the doctors talking about you know having reverse diabetes and things like that so much of that in my mind is is a is a demonstration of the power of the mind, the power of how we see ourselves, and also imagining things being the start of them coming into fruition. You know, all things seen started as unseen until they took form. So there, that you have that in this basic reality show that's, you know, inspirational and there for views and everything else, and people see it as fluff, but you're seeing the human experience played out again and again and again. I also like irony, um, for example, I'm a hoop dancer. I love hooping. A lot of the people in the hoop dance world are also hippies and really into the environment and really into living naturally and living on the land. But we're hooping inside of, you know, like polypropylene hoops, these like plastic, different types, different kinds of plastic, but plastic tubing nonetheless that is clearly not a biodegradable thing that's made with zero impact on the environment and I wonder how many people don't realize that as we, and I'm not criticizing because I'm a hoop dancer, as we spiral our connection into the universe inside of this plastic hoop. Like to me that stuff is funny. Um, I also, I like pet peeves, I like, um, I like musing on the mysteries of life, things like that, things like that psychopaths and um, humor and, and a variety of things. Um, those who enjoy that flavor will find me, I'm sure, um, will connect. So that's all that I really have for you today. I am enjoying some beautiful weather here in the Chicago area. I hope that you're enjoying some beaut beautiful weather as well wherever you are, and if you're not, I hope that you're feeling beautiful inside. And we'll just say goodbye one more time to Mr. Ronan, who's losing his shirt. He's a little bitty, he's he's almost preemie. Not quite, but he's a very small newborn. So, spending a little time with this guy. Just finished pre uh, prepping dinner and taking a quick little break before I hop on the computer and get some work done. All right, guys, thanks so much for stopping by. Feel free to subscribe and come back. Otherwise, I appreciate you being here today. I look forward to seeing your videos if you do have a channel and to hearing from you in the comments below. And if you have any questions, of course, always leave them down there. Enjoy the rest of your day and your evening, and I hope it's a beautiful week for you. Bye for now.